Hi there, I'm Emily Mielstein with the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council, and this is a public hearing video explaining proposed changes for Refish Amendment 43, which addresses hogfish. We're here addressing some changes to hogfish because the state of Florida completed a stock assessment in 2014. Now the state took responsibility for that stock assessment because a majority of the hogfish landings, both commercially and recreationally, um, occur in the state of Florida. So in order to ensure that our federal reef fish fisheries management plan is consistent with the best scientific information available, the council considering making a couple of changes. The first is redefining the geographical range of the Gulf hogfish stock. The second one is addressing status determination criteria, or in other words, determining whether a stock is overfished or experiencing overfishing. And then finally, addressing annual catch limits and annual catch targets for the Gulf hogfish stock. And while we're here, the council is also considering increasing the minimum size limit for hogfish in the Gulf and disallowing the use of powerheads to harvest hogfish in the stressed area. There are five actions in this amendment, and I'm going to walk you through each one of them. So since we're at the public hearing stage, we're going to be asking for your public opinion on each one of these actions and the different alternatives that are being suggested. So just pay attention as we go through, and please let us know what you think about what we should do for each one of these actions. Action 1 addresses the definition of the hogfish management unit. Right now, the reef fish management plan in the Gulf defines the management unit of hogfish as all of the hogfish that are found in Gulf of Mexico federal waters. CDAR 37, that stock assessment that was recently completed, shows, however, that there are three distinct stocks in the southeast U.S. There's a West Florida stock, there's a Florida Keys slash East Florida stock, and then there's a stock that goes from Georgia up to the northern North Carolina border. So the council is considering redefining the boundaries of the hogfish management unit to reflect the findings of that stock assessment. This map shows you the three different hogfish stocks that were defined in the latest stock assessment. The council is considering a number of different alternatives here. The first alternative is the no action alternative, and that would leave the stock definition as all of the hogfish found in the exclusive economic zone of the Gulf. The second alternative is the council's preferred alternative, and that would make the boundary south of Cape Sable. The geographical range of the unit would be all waters in the Gulf of Mexico that are north of the line extending west from 25 degrees, 9 minutes north latitude, out to the outer boundary of the exclusive economic zone. Alternative 3 would make the boundary at Shark Point, so the geographical range of the hogfish unit would be all waters of the Gulf of Mexico north of the line that extends west from 25 degrees, 23 minutes north latitude to the outer boundary of the exclusive economic zone. Or Alternative 4 would set the stock boundary at the Monroe-Collier County line. The geographical range of the unit would then be defined as all the waters in the Gulf of Mexico that are north of the line that extends west from 25 degrees, 48 minutes north latitude, out to the outer boundary of the exclusive economic zone. Now note that under Preferred Alternative 2 and also Alternatives 3 and 4, the Gulf Council will request that the Secretary of Commerce designate the South Atlantic Council as the council responsible for hogfish that is south of that demarcation. This map shows the boundary lines for the different alternatives that are being considered. Moving on to Action 2, which addresses status determination criteria, which is what the council needs to set in order to determine whether a stock is overfished or experiencing overfishing. So bear with me here as we get into some of the nitty gritty of the fish biology. So the point estimate for maximum sustainable yield usually has quite a lot of uncertainty. For most reef fish stocks, a proxy is set that's equal to the yield when fishing at the fishing mortality rate of 30% spawning potential ratio. Maximum fishing mortality threshold is set equal to the proxy fishing rate at 30% spawning potential ratio. The minimum stock size threshold is set at a spawning stock biomass that is less than the maximum sustainable yield. So now we'll get into the alternatives. The first is the no action alternative. That would leave things how they are and we wouldn't have a set status determination criteria 
for the hogfish stock. Alternative two would make maximum sustainable yield the point estimate of maximum sustainable yield in the most recent stock assessment. The maximum fishing mortality threshold would be set equal to F maximum sustainable yield from the most recent stock assessment. We have a couple options for setting minimum stock size threshold. First is option 2A and that would set it at 1 minus the natural mortality rate times the spawning stock biomass at maximum sustainable yield. And here the natural mortality rate for hogfish is at 0 0.179. Option 2B would set the minimum stock size threshold at 75% of the spawning stock biomass at MSY. And option 2C would set the minimum stock size threshold at 50% of the spawning stock biomass at MSY. Alternative 3, which is the Council's preferred alternative, would set maximum sustainable yield equal to the equilibrium yield at F 30% spawning potential ratio. The maximum fishing mortality threshold would be set at F 30% spawning potential ratio. And again, with the maximum and again, the minimum stock size threshold would have a couple options. Option 3A would be to set the minimum stock size threshold at 1 minus the natural mortality rate times spawning stock biomass at 30% spawning potential ratio. And here the natural mortality rate, again for hogfish, is equal to 0 0.179. The council's preferred option is option 3B, which would set the minimum stock size threshold at 75% of the spawning stock biomass at 30% spawning potential ratio. And then option 3C would be to set the minimum stock size threshold at 50% of the spawning stock biomass at 30% spawning potential ratio. And finally, alternative four would set the maximum sustainable yield at the equilibrium yield at F 40% spawning potential ratio. And the maximum fishing mortality threshold would be set at F 40% spawning potential ratio. The, we have some options again for setting minimum stock size threshold. Option 4A would set it at one minus the natural mortality rate times the spawning stock biomass at 40% spawning potential ratio. And that, again, for hogfish, the natural mortality rate would be defined as 0 0.179. Option 4B would set the minimum stock size threshold for hogfish at 75% of the spawning stock biomass at 40% spawning potential ratio. And option 4C would set the minimum stock size threshold at 50% of spawning stock biomass at 40% SPR. Whew. Now, moving on to action three. Let's talk about setting annual catch limits and annual catch targets. So the current annual catch limit for hogfish is 208,000 pounds. The current annual catch target is set at 179,000 pounds. After reviewing CDAR 37, the acceptable biological catch levels have changed, and they are in this table as follows. Now you'll notice after 2018, the Council Scientific Advisors suggested that the uh, acceptable biological catch revert to the equilibrium level acceptable biological catch. And as you can see by this graphic here, the Council can set the annual catch limits and annual catch targets less than or equal to the acceptable biological catch. Alternative one is the no action alternative and that would leave the catch limits as they are despite the change from the stock assessment. Alternative two would set annual catch limits equal to the acceptable biological catch for each year from 2016 through 2018. The annual catch limit for the years following 2018 would then revert to that equilibrium acceptable biological catch yield until modified by rulemaking. The Council's preferred alternative is Alternative 3, and that would set a constant catch annual catch limit at 219,000 pounds based on the constant catch acceptable biological catch that was recommended for the years 2016 through 2018. So the annual catch limit will remain at 219,000 pounds after 2018 until modified by rulemaking. Now you'll see there's an asterisk here because there is still some legal question as to whether or not after 2018 we can leave the 
annual catch limit at 219,000 pounds, since that's above the Scientific and Statistical Committee's recommendation of reverting back to that equilibrium acceptable biological catch yield. Fortunately, there is a stock assessment tentatively scheduled for 2018 that will potentially update those yield streams and so it won't be a problem. Then finally, alternative four would set a constant catch annual catch limit at the equilibrium acceptable biological catch level, which is 159,300 pounds. That annual catch limit would remain in place until modified by rulemaking. And then for alternatives two, three, or four, the council would need to select how to set an annual catch target. So option A, there would not be an annual catch target to find. And option B, an annual catch target would be set based on the annual catch limit, annual catch target control rule at 87% of the annual catch limit. Action four addresses the minimum size limit for hogfish. The hogfish minimum size limit for both recreational and commercial fishing is currently set at 12 inches at the fork. Increasing the size limit could slow the rate of harvest and thereby reduce the likelihood of a quota closure. Allowing fish to grow to a larger size provides additional spawning opportunities and it allows more females to transition to males. And finally, the South Atlantic Council is considering a 16-inch size limit for the East Florida, Florida Keys stock. The first alternative, the no-action alternative, would leave the minimum size limit for hogfish at 12 inches. The second alternative would set the hogfish minimum size limit at 14 inches. The third alternative would set the hogfish minimum size limit at 15 inches, and the council's current preferred alternative would set the hogfish minimum size limit at 16 inches. And finally, we move on to action five, which is addresses the use of powerheads in the stressed area of the Gulf. So powerheads may not be used in the stressed area of the Gulf to take refish. Currently, that provision does not apply to hogfish due to a number of different regulatory changes. This map here shows where that stressed area is in the Gulf. The Council is simply considering two alternatives here. The first is the no action alternative, and that would continue to allow the use of powerheads on hogfish in the stressed area in the Gulf. The second alternative is the council's preferred alternative, and that would remove the provision that exempts hogfish from the prohibition on the use of powerheads to take Gulf reef fish in the stressed area. So the council would really like to hear your thoughts on this before they take final action. You have a couple of options. You can either click this link and submit your comments online, or you can email us directly at golfcouncil at golfcouncil.org with your thoughts. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation and tell us what you think.